to the Recovery Daily Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Miller. I am a grateful recovering alcoholic and stroke survivor. And today I wanted to give you an update on how my neuro-ophthalmologist exam went. So I was there for about an hour, no, two, wait, (laughs) it started at one I remember looking at the clock when we were almost done and it was 3.30. So I think we ended up leaving at about 4. So I was there for about 3 hours. Um, That seems, it flew by. Um, So what we did was, um, when I first went in, we, uh, I explained my whole stroke story. And she just interrupted and kind of guided me in what direction I needed to go to give her the information that she needed. Um, I talked about my inability to watch things that move and um, that I can't, you know, all the things that I can't do, ride in the car, drive, ride a bike, walk, uh, long distances, that kind of thing. Um, So... Next, we did some classic eye exams where I had to read the the letters and and that kind of stuff. Um, and then I did a test that uh, you put your head in there and um, there's like a like a half circle in front of you and you have to click the button whenever you see a light inside that area. Um, so I think it's like testing your peripheral and stuff. I actually had to do that twice. They said it was two different types of test, um, but it looked the same to me. So I don't know what they were testing. One was supposed to be more detailed than the first one or something like that. Um, and yeah, I mean, I was in there for a long time. They were just doing lots of, they looked at the back of my eyes. They looked at my MRI results. They looked at through all of my records from my neurologist and from the vision therapist and optometrist. So um, to make a very long story short, they found nothing wrong with my visual symptom system. So um, they tested my tracking. They tested Um, I mean, they didn't test convergence. That's something that was tested at the optometrist. So they were, he was testing more like, um, I don't know, tracking seemed to be the biggest thing and, uh, my acuity and maybe I'm forgetting some things, but they didn't see anything wrong, um, with me. (laughs) So, uh, He said that one thing that's interesting to him is that where I had my stroke is nowhere near anything that controls my vision. So any visual disturbances that I'm having post-stroke is not due to the stroke that has been indicated on the MRI. So I said, well, what I said, I've been having this since my stroke. And he said, well, the only thing that he can think of is that I had two strokes. So that was disconcerting. Um, You would think that they maybe would have seen that in my MRIs that I had done. But who knows? Who knows? Um, So the next thing that I'm going to be doing is going to a neurotometrist and this person um, is their specialty is your vestibular system so they test for vestibular disorders so I came right home and looked up what that was of course so your vest, if you have vestibular dysfunction, it's a disturbance in your, in the body's balance system. And the balance system is 
comprised of both your, you know, you always hear about what's in your ears, the thing that keeps you balanced. Well, there's a lot more than that. There's, um, there's a whole like system that includes your, uh, visual system and your, I don't know, your ears and I don't know yet. I have a lot of, uh, research to do for this, but, um, when you have vestibular dysfunctions, it can, um, it can cause vertigo, nausea, vomiting, intolerance to head motion, um, some things that I can't pronounce, makes you unsteady on your feet. Um, I have felt fairly steady on my feet, but there are times that if my head's hurting bad enough, I'll start feeling a little unstable on my feet. Um, if I kind of lay my head to the side, I kind of have, but it's not like, you know, I've had the equilibrium problem before where you actually, they, I've gone to the doctor and they like move your head around to try to get the stuff in your ear to go back to the way it's supposed to be, you know, clinical terms only on recovery daily podcast, uh, but I've had that before. This is not like that at all. It's not like if I um, lay down on my back that things are spinning. It's never been like that. This is very different. So um, this next uh, neurotometrist is in uh, Washington, D.C. It looks like her specialties are Otolaryngology. Let's try it. Otolaryngology, otology, and neuro neurotology. Um, so that's where I'm going to be going in DC. I will call and make an appointment tomorrow. She's at the um, Washington Hospital Center. So. So that's the update. I feel terrible. That's why I'm doing just a short episode. I wanted to check in with you um, because I still need to be here even when I feel poo-poo. <laughs> so I'm going to go cuddle with my puppies and thank you for tuning in and caring about my progress in recovery. And um, I'm going to wake up nice and full of hope tomorrow as you can imagine, I'm feeling kind of like, you know, when you're feeling so bad and I'm sitting there in the waiting room, like they keep sending me back to the waiting room and I'm going back for more tests and I'm sitting there and my head is just throbbing, you know, all of this stuff that they're doing with my eyes. You know, it's funny that they're telling me there's nothing wrong with my eyes, yet everything that they're doing is just causing so much pain in my head. So um, it's frustrating, you know. I'm not going to lie. It's frustrating. But um, they were very nice and apologetic. They hated making me feel, you know, pain. But um, I said, please just do whatever you have to do. We have to figure out what's wrong. So the the neuro ophthalmologist he was great he said um it's one thing for us to figure out what's wrong and then it's another thing to um figure out how to help you and he said um one thing is if there was something wrong with your vision system it's a little easier to address um but something wrong with your balance system, with your vestibular system, is a little more difficult to address. So um, right now, I just want to find out what's wrong with me. You know, that's really what I'm interested in is figuring out what's wrong with me. And then whether it can be addressed or not is secondary. You know, I, I don't, it's hard to walk around having pain and feeling, knowing that there's something wrong and not being able to figure out what it is. And no, none of these 
you know, specialists can identify what it is. So I'm just going to keep plugging away. I'm going to read a bunch about uh, the vestibular system, but um, I did, you know, just, just the amount that I've looked at today, the most common cause of severe central vestibular dysfunction is an ischemic stroke, which is what I had. Um, and strokes account for 25% of patients who have central vestibular dysfunction. Uh, so we'll see, you know, I, I'm a little skeptical because I don't feel like I'm going to fall over. I don't feel, uh, dizzy per se. The dizziness that I have known my whole life, that's a little different than what I feel. It's more like, uh, motion sickness and, um, but it's motion sickness on a level I've never encountered before, where if somebody's moving their hands really fast in front of my face, it'll give me motion sickness. So, all right, with that, I'm going to cut it short today. And thank you so much for listening. And I'm sure we will be back and inspiring tomorrow. So I will talk to you tomorrow.